Paul and Silas healed a young girl who was really unwell. This girl was a slave and was being treated very badly by her owners, who were using her to make money. Once the girl was well again, the owners realised they couldn't make money from her any longer, and they were so angry. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the judges in the town. They said, these men, who are Jews, are causing all kinds of trouble. They are publicly teaching things which are against our laws as Romans. The crowd also began attacking them and the judges ordered that Paul and Silas be beaten up and thrown into the inner cha chamber of the prison, bound with chains and guarded day and night. At about midnight in the prison, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise and thanksgiving to God. All the prisoners were listening. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so powerful the very foundations of the prison were shaken. And at once, all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. The jailer woke and saw the prison doors open. Afraid for what might happen, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself, thinking the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't hurt yourself, we're all here. Then the jailer called for light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before, before Paul and Silas. He brought them out of the prison and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they answered, Believe and trust in Jesus as your personal saviour and you will be saved, you and your family. That very night, the jailer and his family became followers of Jesus and they were all baptised. Brilliant. And now we're going to hear from the next instalment from uh, Dr. Luke McBain's Epic Adventure. Oh, hi there. It's Dr. Luke McBain. Day three of my epic adventures. I tell you what, the weather is crazy. I've been caught here in this epic storm. The wind has been howling. The rain has been thrashing down. I just need to get some shelter now. Oh, I'm not sure I can make it to base camp today. I think I'm gonna have to sleep here in this crack. I'll have to bunker down here for the night. Feel a bit like a prisoner in this storm, but I've gotta do what I've gotta do. Do you know what? This reminds me of the life of Paul and his epic adventures and one particular story of Paul, when he is caught, flogged, he's beaten up because of healing a young girl. Can you believe that? He heals this girl and the, the owners of this girl, this girl was a slave, you see, the owners of this girl can't believe that he's done this. So they grab him, they've beaten him up and they have him thrown into jail. Unbelievable, him and his companion Silas. And there they are, they're prisoners in jail. And it's about midnight, it's dark outside. And they start singing to God, singing hymns of praise and worship to God. And suddenly there is this extraordinary earthquake and the earthquake breaks open the prison doors and the shackles, the chains on their feet and hands are suddenly broken free. And the jailer, do you know what? He wakes up in the middle of this earthquake and he sees that the prison has been broken in two and he thinks, the prisoners are gonna escape. All I can do is kill myself. I don't wanna know what's gonna happen if they get free. But in that moment, Paul and Silas, he's, they say to the jailer, stop, stop, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself, we're here, we're here. The jailer, he comes up to Paul and Silas. He realizes that these are extraordinary men of God. And he says to them, what must I do to be saved? And at that very night, this prisoner and his whole household became Christians. They believed in Jesus. 
in that place, in that prison, in that dark cell. God moved in power. And this jailer, seeing Paul and his extraordinary faith in God, seeing the amazing power of God, this prisoner believes in God and becomes a follower of Jesus. What an extraordinary story. Well, I better get ready to bunker down here for the night. It's just getting too windy out there. I can't move. Fortunately, I've got my sleeping bag. I better get ready for a long night in this weather. I'll see you soon. Amazing. Day three of Dr. Luke's adventures. And uh, that looked like a pretty tight spot to be uh, witnessing a storm and being out in a storm. Uh, I don't think I'd like to be him. I don't know about you. Um, but I think he might have made it back, actually. Um, Dr. Luke, are you, are you around? Have you made it back? Dr. Luke, are you there? I think he was hoping to be joining us this morning. Let's just see if he's there. Oh, oh. <coughs> Oh, hello, everyone. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can't hear me very well there. Oh, it was so wet out there. Goodness me. Whew. How wet was that? I can't believe how wet I got. Oh, let's hang that up there. Whew. Well, good morning, everyone. It is wonderful to be with you again. I just about got back from that storm. And that night, oh, I got so cold, managed to just about dry off. But here I am. It's wonderful to be with you again this morning. What an extraordinary story that we just heard about Paul and Silas stuck in prison. And I tell you what, last night on the top of that mountain, I felt like I was in a prison. Do you know what? I didn't feel very happy, though. I felt cold and shivery and oh, pretty sorry for myself being up there. What an amazing contrast to Paul and Silas. They didn't feel sorry for themselves. What did they do instead? They were worshipping and giving thanks to God. I mean, that is extraordinary. Just imagine what it must have been like for them. Just imagine that they had been beaten up. They had been hit with rods. They're thrown into prison. And instead of feeling sorry for themselves, they give thanks and praise to God. That is amazing. Now we're going to hear now from a friend of mine. She is absolutely awesome. Her name is Hannah and she is going to share a bit about how she was in a really difficult time in her life. But in that place, God was there. God was with her. God's Holy Spirit was working through her, even in that difficult and dark place. Let's hear from Hannah now. Hello, my name's Hannah and I've been asked to talk about a time where God helped me in a really hard time. Now, there was a time where I lived in Newcastle and that was away from my mum and dad and my friends. And it was good for a little while, but then some really rubbish things happened and I got a little bit sad and I felt quite lonely. And the thing is that I felt quite stuck and that was really rubbish. And I didn't really know whether I could ever feel happy again. And I didn't really know if anyone could ever help me with that, let alone God. I'd kind of forgotten about him. But God hadn't forgot about me, which is really good. <laughs> what God did was he put people in my life that loved and cared for me and they prayed for me to have the Holy Spirit. So even though I couldn't feel God's Holy Spirit, I was actually experiencing it and being healed by it. He even at one point got someone that I'd never ever met before to come up to me to pray for me and to tell me that God loves me. Now he did that because he wanted me to know and believe in him and to know that he was real so that I could know to put my trust in him. And because I put my trust in him, he led me out of it step by step. Now, I don't think God put me in that hard time, 
but I know that because I put my trust in him, things worked out for the good. And the thing is that not only was that really good at the time, but now my faith is so much stronger. And actually I've learned so much through that rubbish time that it almost makes it a little bit worth it. It doesn't mean that it was very fun to go through it, but because of all the things that God taught me in that time and the relationships and friendships that I built, I now am such a stronger person because of it. And that's how God can work through the rubbish things. Even though the rubbish things are a bit rubbish, at least good things come out of them. And that's my experience. What an incredible story. My friend Hannah, in Newcastle, going through some really difficult times, but God was there with her. And not only that, God was shaping her and moulding her and helping her to become the person that God wanted to be helped for God wanted her to be, even in that difficult time. God was at work. And that amazing story of that person, that complete stranger who came up to her and spoke to her and said that God loved her. God was working, even through strangers, into Hannah's life. And we see in this amazing story of Paul and Silas, there they are in prison, having been flogged and beaten, that God is at work in that place. Through their singing, through their thanksgiving to God, extraordinary things happen. Now I want to ask you a question this morning. I wonder what you think worship is. What do you think worship is? As Christians, worship is a key part of our faith. But to worship, you could say, is simply to give worth to something, to value it, to make it really important in our lives. And actually, everybody worships something. Every person will make something or maybe someone the most important in their lives. And so they focus all their thoughts on this thing or person. They give their time and their energy towards this thing or this person. It's like they are consumed by it. And so that could be for lots of different things. Maybe that's something that you own that you think is just absolutely brilliant. Maybe it's a particular toy that you have. Maybe there's somebody in your life, another person, uh, who you just think is absolutely brilliant and who you think about all the time. Maybe it's something like money that you just wish you could have more money so you could do more things with your money and buy more things. Actually, everyone in the world worship something. As Christians, we believe that our most important thing that we should put our thoughts and our attention towards is God. Because God made us to worship, but God wants us to worship him. Because he knows that when we worship, amazing things happen and we find connection with God. And I know that's been the case in my life. When I have worshipped God, extraordinary things have happened and I have found peace and comfort and joy in worshipping, even in the difficult times, even when maybe I've not felt like worshipping God. It's amazing how when we worship and give our attention to God, he pours out his Holy Spirit. He speaks to us. He fills us with his love. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that extraordinary? That's what Paul and Silas were doing. In that deep, dark prison, they worshipped God. And what's the result? Well, extraordinary things happen. The jail is shook. An earthquake happens. All of their chains are, come unloose, the doors are thrown open and that jailer, he doesn't know what to do. He suddenly thinks the worst, he's going to have to kill himself because these prisoners have got out. 
Paul and Silas, no, they don't run off. They run to the jailer. They tell him to stop. And then that jailer believes in Jesus. God moves in amazing ways. This jailer and his family come to believe in Jesus. Lives are transformed and changed. That is amazing. Well, I'm going to have to get off to the next part of my adventure. It's been awesome to be with you today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.